Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. In this video we study variation within a species. We'll look at the sources of variation, types of variation as well as some examples of each. There are a number of sources of variation that cause change within species. One, meiosis, including crossing over and random arrangement of chromosomes on the equator. Two, mutations in DNA, whether they're positive, negative, or neutral. Three, random fertilization is another source of variation, which sperm will fuse with which egg. Four, random mating, the selection of mating partners leads to variation and changes in the gene pool of a population. So these sources of variation mean that the organisms of the same species are different in appearance. Natural selection relies on this genetic variation as the environment selects the organisms with the best adapted variations from a wide range of genetically different individuals. If there was no variation in a species, the entire population could die out if there was an unfavorable change in the environment. The sources of variation are meiosis, mutations, and reproduction, which includes random fertilization and random mating. A quick review of the two sources of variation in meiosis. Crossing over between homologous pairs of chromosomes in prophase 1. Random arrangement of homologous pairs of chromosomes in metaphase 1. Crossing over involves a maternal chromosome from the mother and a paternal chromosome from the father and they exchange genetic material in prophase 1 to introduce variation and different gene combinations in the gametes produced by meiosis. Random arrangement of homologous chromosome pairs in metaphase 1 refers to the random positioning of the maternal and paternal chromosomes on the equator or the middle of the cell. So a paternal chromosome, for example this one here, may be positioned above the equator or below the equator. It's random and it leads to greater variation in the gametes. Don't confuse independent assortment and random assortment with this source of variation we're discussing here. You can look back at the chapter on meiosis to revise these related concepts. Mutations are the primary source of genetic variation. A mutation is simply a change in the sequence or the quantity of nucleotides in DNA. Nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA with nitrogen bases G, C, T and A joining to form a double strand of DNA. A change in one nitrogen base only, like GCG changing to GTG, may lead to a change in an amino acid, which may lead to a change in the protein produced. Mutations must occur in gametes, the sex cells, or gonads, the sex organs, in other words the testes or the ovaries, to be passed on and inherited by the offspring. These mutations or changes in the DNA or in the genotype can cause changes in the physical features or the phenotype as determined by proteins. For example, a lack of melanin pigment causes albinism or abnormal floral structures, excess muscle bulk in animals or humans. Some sprinters have fast twitch muscle fibers that provide short bursts of power and speed or six-finger mutations in humans or animals. A change in a single nitrogen base can cause sickle cell anemia, where the normal biconcave red blood cells take on a distorted sickle shape. So changes in the genotype can affect the phenotype. If C is replaced by T, it may cause a change in the amino acid, which may result in a different or a modified protein. There are also favorable mutations that increase resistance to conditions like diabetes, HIV, malaria, and heart disease in certain population groups. To refresh our memories, we've included an example from protein synthesis in our study guide. Processes, transcription, and translation ensure the copying of the DNA code to form mRNA and guide the tRNA molecules to position their amino acids in the correct sequence to eventually form a protein. So if we have a mutation like CTC, then the valine is replaced by glutamic acid. This may result in a different or a dysfunctional protein being formed. Mutations also occur in bacteria populations. 
They multiply very quickly, so mistakes can easily occur. If there's a favorable change that benefits bacteria, for example, a mutation that causes resistance to a drug, the normal bacteria are destroyed, but the mutant forms survive and multiply to form a drug-resistant population. The same process occurs in viruses to form drug-resistant strains. Another source of variation occurs in reproduction. Random mating leads to even more gene combinations and more variation. Each offspring formed is different due to random mating pairs. Many organisms make a huge effort to impress the selected mate and increase the chances of passing on superior genes. Random fusion or fertilization of male and female gametes produces different or unique gene combinations in the offspring which increases variation within a species. Every gamete has a different genetic combination due to crossing over and random arrangement of chromosomes in meiosis. So we have 23 unique chromosomes in the sperm, 23 unique chromosomes in the ovum. They fuse in fertilization to form a zygote with 46 chromosomes that are unique in their genetic combination. This brings us to the end of sources of variation. Now we look at types of variation within a species. We have two types, one continuous and two discontinuous. A quick overview using this population of hypothetical organisms. If we look at variation in their length, we can see they can be any length from 10 to 50 millimeters. We have a continuum of values on the x-axis. There are no gaps. This is known as continuous variation and we show this data in a histogram or in a line graph. If we look at the same population, the same organisms, but analyze the variation in their patterns, they have three distinct categories, either striped or checked or dotted. There are no intermediate forms. This is discontinuous variation and we show this data in a bar graph with gaps to show the distinct categories. Let's look at examples of continuous variation. We expect a range of phenotypes that form a continuous spectrum with extremes at either end. The weight of newborn lambs, for example, ranges from tiny lambs to medium to heavyweight newborns. Most lambs have average birth mass as seen in the peak in the middle of the graph. Very few are tiny, very few are heavyweight. These characteristics are controlled by more than one gene, we call them polygenic, or they have more than two alleles per gene, known as multiple alleles. This means there is greater variation and a greater range of possible phenotypes. The production of milk in dairy cows, for example, ranges from low volume to medium to high volume milk producers. Most cows produce average amounts of milk. These characteristics can be measured, so they are quantitative and they are also affected by the environment. Height in humans shows a continuum of data. Length of thumbs occur in any size within a certain range. Size of leaves, length of ladybirds, heart rate, hair length, blood pressure, width of big toe, etc. In continuous variation, we often see extremes at either end. For example, in this population group, there are very few short individuals and very few extra tall. Most individuals are average height as seen in the peak. Discontinuous variation, in contrast, has distinct groups or categories with no intermediate forms, no in-between combinations. These characteristics are often controlled by single alleles or few alleles, so there are fewer possible gene combinations. The data is discrete with gaps between the data. We use bar graphs to represent the data and emphasize the gaps. These characteristics are qualitative, so they can be described. Human blood groups are a good example of discontinuous variation as humans are either A or B or AB or O. Other examples include tongue rolling, dimples, and we'll look at some more. 
Good examples of discontinuous variation are controlled by one gene and not affected by the environment. Some well-known examples like tongue rolling or freckles are controlled by a number of factors. Blood groups, on the other hand, are clear examples with distinct groups. Gender composition of a population or fingerprints with three distinct groups of arches, loops or whorls that can be represented in a bar graph. Another clear example is earwax in humans. Wet, sticky, darker earwax is common in African and European populations, whereas dry, flaky, lighter earwax is common in East Asian populations. These are determined by one gene and can be illustrated in a bar graph. Other examples of discontinuous variation are seen in Mendel's experiments. Mendel used pea plants as they had very distinct categories. They are either or characteristics, either round seeds or wrinkled, either white flowers or purple flowers, no in-between forms. The data was qualitative as he could describe the colors of the seeds and plot them in a bar graph. Let's compare these two types of variation. Continuous variation shows a continuous spectrum of any values. Discontinuous shows discrete categories with specific values. There are intermediate values with no gaps. No intermediate values with gaps in the data. In continuous, they are controlled by genes and the environment, controlled by genes only. Continuous variation has many genes known as polygenic or multiple alleles. Discontinuous, very few genes or single alleles. There is a range of phenotypes in continuous, limited distinct phenotypes. It is quantitative data that can be measured. It is qualitative data that can be described. Continuous variation is illustrated in histograms or line graphs with no gaps. Discontinuous variation we find in bar graphs with gaps between distinct groups. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.